Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, uh, Moonflower Tarot. Um, before I start, um, I just want to quickly wish everyone a happy harvest moon. Um, I believe this, is, this one is pretty rare, um, but yeah, happy harvest moon. Um, <clears throat> I've, you know, cozied up. Uh, you know, lit a candle, kind of like made this into an occasion, you know, because <laughs> I was thinking, why not? Um, you know, let's do a flip through of this um, tarot deck. So this is, um, as you may already know, <laughs> it probably says in the um, thumbnail, um, this is the Edmund Dulac uh, Tarot. And um, it is by an artist named Edmund Dulac, um, who um, I believe his peak was in the golden era of illustration. Um, he illustrated um, for lots of stories, um, Shakespeare, um, Hans Christian Andersen. Um, and what really stood out to me was that he also illustrated um, for the Bronte sisters, um, specifically um, Jane Eyre, uh, which is really interesting. I mean, I just think that that's really unique to go from, you know, like fairy tales and Shakespeare to, um, you know, something uh, uh, that was considered a bit more, I guess, um, contemporary, um, at least for that time. Um, yeah, and a little uh, background info. Um, so this artist um, was actually born um, in France, um, but then he became um, an English uh, citizen at the age of 30. Um, and I believe, uh, yeah, so he, yeah, he became an English citizen in the, I think, early 19th century, um, in his 30s, um, but anyways, enough about, um, enough about, yeah, so we're gonna do a flip through soon, but, you know, I really like to delve into the artist, um, the illustrator, because it just, it really just makes to me, the um, the art, the images, it just speaks to me more, like knowing a little bit about the artist. But um, yeah, so let's get straight into the flip through without further ado. So um, this is the box that it came in, um, the Edmund Duloc Tarot. Um, and then this is what the back looks like. And um, yeah, so Los Caraveo is the publisher. Um, yeah, made in Italy. So yeah, um, standard box here. And then um, it comes with a little white book. Um, and it gives a little blip about the artist. Um, and then it gives, you know, your standard um, Rider Waite Smith type uh, explanation. And usually, um, I believe there is a an example of how to do a tarot spread included in here. Um, I think it's in the front pages. Oh, there we go, yeah. Um, yeah, and it comes in these languages, so English, Italian, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. Um, yeah, it's actually um, a recent uh, publication, uh, 2020. So exciting, it's uh, relatively new, um, so yeah. So it also comes with um, this introductory card, um, Edmund Duloc, Los Carabeo, and this is what the back looks like. It's actually, you know, really just, I really like the backs, um, and the cardstock, I saw, I actually saw a lot of reviews saying that the cardstock wasn't um, high quality, but this is actually, I would say this is pretty standard. Um, for Los Carabeo decks. Um, I don't find it to be particularly noticeably thin. Um, I mean, maybe more thin than something that's like really like, you know, cardboard or not cardboard, but like um, more stiff, but I rather like this because it's better, um, at least for me, um, when, they're, when it's a little more fluid for shuffling, but that's only because I have um, smaller hands and um, that's just, I prefer it. Um, but yeah, the backs, um, there are these, um, horses, uh, it looks like, and kind of, you know, it's interesting. It kind of reminds me of, like, 
old, um, like a Greek uh, vase in a museum, but at the same time, there's that little bit of like fantasy in there that makes it a little bit more contemporary. Um, so I really like that. And this is another introductory card that you get um, with, I think, most Los Corbeo decks. Um, so I'm just going to put this aside and then um, let's get straight on into the flip through. Um, Okay, so here we have The Fool. It really looks to me like this is this may be like Chinese, like maybe from like a Chinese um, folk tale. This is really interesting. I actually really enjoy the fact that, um, I'm just going to zoom in. I really enjoy the fact that it's different from the standard Rider Waite Smith because because it's just, it, you know, it allows you to tap into your intuition a bit more. Um, and that makes for a more unique experience. Because I do love um, the classic Rider Waite Smith style. But at the same time, sometimes I like this. I appreciate this kind of, um, like, different take. It's refreshing. And I feel like I can expand my intuition even you know just using the different images that you normally wouldn't see um so it's very unique um and i really i appreciate that a lot and um, here we have the magician um i'm getting some merlin vibes here i'm getting okay so i believe this is the high priestess um she's like um like an ice queen ice princess See, this is what I mean. I just appreciate how unique this is. I mean, it's just like, for me, it allows me to expand um, intuitively and also artistically. Just looking at the images, I just, I appreciate it a lot. And um, the uniqueness. So here we have the Empress. This is definitely a unique take on the Empress. Um, yeah, I'm definitely getting some like... Uh, like maybe some early 19th century or maybe, yeah, like late 18th century vibes. Um, so the Empress here. Um, yeah, I'm just like soaking the image in <laughs> along with you guys. Wow. Okay, so this is the Emperor. I'm getting some um, Maharaja vibes. Hmm. There's a bit of like Arabian Nights kind of a feel to it as well. Oh, especially with this, which I just love. And this is the Hierophant. Ooh. I really, I love this different take. I mean, because usually he's, you know, in a chair on like, um, like a high chair kind of zoomed in. But this is so different and I love that about this. It's just putting a smile on my face. Like just how unique it is. And this is pretty classic, a uh, classic take on the lovers here. Um, very um, Arabian Nights. Uh, I'm getting some Scheherazade vibes. I like it. And then we have the chariot. Definite like, um, you know, Cinderella vibes. But this is obviously um, like after... Actually, you know, not a pumpkin carriage, but just like a normal carriage. Um, and then we have, I don't know what, every time I look at the strength card, I want to say La Forza because I know <laughs> that's the uh, traditional name, um, strength. But I really love this strength card. Um, it's so different and yet it still is so expressive in its meaning. Um, and the fact that she has um, a leopard um, on a leash um, clearly shows some amount of strength, power. Um, when I look at this, I think like she's graceful, but there's like a strength, like an inner strength. Um, and it's dignified. And um, yeah, I could go on just talking about what's coming to me when I look at these, you know, and we all see something different. So I also really appreciate seeing other um, people's reviews as well and seeing their take on these images. I think it's fascinating. Um, 
what everybody gets um, individually looking at, you know, any art really. Um, but here we have the Hermit. So this is, I would say, a pretty classical um, or classic um, take on what you would expect from a Hermit card because you look at it right away and it looks like the Hermit. Here we have the wheel. So this is definitely um, different. Um, obviously, you know, it's um, Sleeping Beauty here um, with the spindle. The Wheel of Fortune. Um, it's kind of interesting. I mean, because the story behind it obviously is, um, yeah, she pricked her finger and then it changed her fate. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, and then here we have... I'm trying to remember the meaning of this card. Hold on one second, let me dig through this, okay. Oh no, okay, yeah, I just had to look at the number, duh, I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah, this is Justice. Um, okay, so this is one of those cards that definitely, I would never guess this was Justice. I would have thought this was the Hanged Man, um, I mean, because obviously, you know, uh, Wait, it, okay, let me just double check really quick because with the numbering, I'm pretty sure it's Justice, but I'm a little bit thrown off here by, yeah, okay, so it is in fact Justice, but for some reason when I look at this, I think of Hanged Man, obviously the tree, um, it's interesting how this card means Justice. I almost want to, okay, excuse me, I know this is taking a while to flip through, it's really more like a review, and you know, you can fast forward if you want but I really want to see the meaning behind this and also why it uh ooh, whoops I accidentally dropped the the book um but I won't really want to read the meaning here like as to why it means justice so here we have okay a woman floats in the wind her eyes closed to avoid being dragged away she holds the heavy bundle of her identity her mistakes and her desires Finding equilibrium, making decisions, and accepting correct compromises. Okay, so yeah. Okay, now I can see why it's justice. Um, that's kind of what I intu intuitively picked up from why it might be justice, but I wasn't quite sure what the meaning was exactly. Um, wow. Yeah, this is a very raw tarot deck. It's definitely not one that um, sugarcoats. I mean, obviously, really expressive. Um, usually, traditionally, you get um, Libran energy from the Justice card, and here I can see where that could play in. Um, this is t this is definitely like a darker take, but at the same time, it's not necessarily bad because you know it's unique once again. Um, it to me that means you know it expands my mind because it's a different perspective, and also you know, it's more raw, it's a bit more gritty, but at the same time, it, you know, there's no facade here of, you know, what it means, um, you know, it's a woman, I guess she's living with her past mistakes, um, you know, learning from her past mistakes, sort of in, you know, decision mode, um, I'm kind of getting, yeah, this, um, energy of sort of, um, almost like judging herself in a way, but not necessarily in a bad way, more so like coming to terms with herself or her decisions. But okay, I can once again go on and on. So let me move on to the next card. So this is actually the hanged man, which this is definitely a different take on the hanged man. Um, it's a mermaid. Um, it looks like she's looking for something, searching for something and kind of at a standstill which definitely goes along with the meaning of the hanged man, but definitely a fresh take. I love that it's different because once again, I, you know, it's fun to be kind of surprised as well by the meanings. And then, you know, you see different things when you look at it again. It's like each time you, you look at these images, it's like, I mean, for me, I see something different each time. And I think that's the beauty of it. Um, but here is death. <clears throat> so clearly this is this I mean this means death um it's interesting it's um hmm 
God, I can get, I can just get lost in this image. And this here really um, sort of speaks to me here. It's like, it's almost as if you, if you were look, to look at it with like a slight veil, to me, it almost looks like spirit, like spirits maybe, like a spiritual presence, but that's just me. Um, wow. And I also really like that um, she's kind of in between, you know, like the cave and, you know, this, the um, ocean as well, you know, kind of like about to enter into another world, something like that. Um, but yeah, once again, I could go on and on just interpreting. So this is Temperance. And this is actually one of my favorite cards in this deck, I think, um, one of them. Um, I mean, I, I just, I love the colors. I love the contrast with the cerulean blue with the pale yellowy gold color. Um, and it really, oh gosh, I mean, personal tidbit here. I, one of my favorite um, childhood books was... Um, the Arabian Nights, and I still have the book till this day, and I cherish it. And sometimes I just I like to just read stories from there, even though I've had it since I was a kid. So every time I look at um, you know these this kind of art, it just so reminds me of that, and it just really for me um, brings nostalgia, and that's why I really love this card. Um, but yeah, I mean clearly temperance. Also, um, you know, as she's stepping down the steps. Interesting. This is the devil. This is definitely a lighter take on the devil because we all know how um, sometimes it can get kind of dark. Um, yeah, there's some like Asian sort of folklore somewhere in there, I think. Really, really. That's why, oh my gosh, I love how unique this is and how it kind of plays um, with different, like, folklore, um, mythologies and folklore from different cultures, from various cultures, and it's very diverse and almost, like, exotic, too, at the same time, but familiar. I just, I love it. This is the tower, clearly. Um, okay, I should probably speed things up because I may run out of time if I spend too long, so I'm going to just speed it up. Um, so here we have, I believe this is the star. We have the moon. We have the sun. We have judgment. Um, if you notice, there's hands here, the hands of judgment. Interesting. We have... Actually, I don't quite remember this card. Oh, okay, the world. Yeah, I had to look at the numbering. Um, but that's why I love this, because, you know, I don't always want to want to look at a card and just, like, know what it means right away. I want to be able to, like kind of fall into the mystery and then when I figure it out figure out oh yeah this is just I mean this is the world I get to sort of see it in a different light again and that's what I love the depth you know I just feel like it adds to the depth and um, but yeah here we have the world um, now I can see it here we have the ace of cups we have the two of cups Ooh, yeah, this is definitely Two of Cups. We have the Three of Cups. I love it. I love, love, love this card. Um, the Four of Cups. Definitely more um, happy than the traditional Four of Cups. We have Five of Cups. Interesting. Oh my god, there's so much meaning in that card. I love it. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm in love with this deck. It's just beautiful, and um, another little tidbit, I know I'm oversharing, but um, another little tidbit, um, I really loved um, the Bronte sisters growing up. I felt like their writing style really spoke to me, and so the fact that um, this artist was an illustrator, uh, the Bronte sisters, it just makes it, makes 
um, his art all the more interesting to me, intriguing. Um, but here we have the Six of Cups. So this is definitely a different take. Um, here we see I'm almost getting like Hansel and Gretel vibes. Um, maybe something else, maybe like uh, Baba Yaga or something. Um, interpret as you will. And then we have the Seven of Cups. This is a really interesting take on the Seven of Cups. A little bit darker. It's like some of them are brighter, some of them are darker um, than the original or traditional um, RWS um, symbology, which I like because it makes a difference, you know? It's like it keeps me on my toes. Here we have the Eight of Cups. Very um, expressive. Nine of Cups. This is definitely interesting. An interesting take on the Nine of Cups for sure. Here we have the Ten of Cups. Also interesting, but very, very expressive to its meaning. We have the Knight of Cups. I can look in this straight away and see a knight, <laughs> even if he's not on his horse. Oh, excuse me, this is a page, okay. Okay, so yeah, um, I thought it was a knight, but then, no, it's a page. But I can see, you know, yeah, either a page or a knight. Um, more of a knight. I'm getting more of a knight energy from this. So maybe he's a page who's about to graduate to a knight. Something like that. Who knows? Don't quote me on that. And here we have the knight. Which I'm actually, I'm getting more of a page energy. Because this knight looks a lot younger. So, hmm. Maybe there's a meaning behind that. Because this is cups, right? And cups people are more sensitive, more emotional, more intuitive, so are water signs. So I would think that in the world of water signs, maybe this is what a knight looks like and this is what a page looks like. I can see that, you know, there's just so many different ways to interpret and learn and I love it. Um, the Queen of Cups, this is really giving me... Um, the vibe of either like the Bronte sisters or Jane Austen, something like that for sure. I mean, it's wow. Okay, next we have, and I just want to do a quick shout out, you know, to those female writers from that time. Um, but I don't want to go on a tangent, but yes, this is definitely, um, that's what really pushed me to buy this deck is knowing that this illustrator would, would illustrate for these female writers of that time, um, who were always really inspiring, um, to me and their writing style as well really speaks to me. So, and this, these illustrations honestly kind of reflect, uh, that kind of, I don't know how to explain it, but just like it fits with that kind of writing style and that kind of world. I'm not really sure how to explain it, but that's just what I feel. Um, and then here we have the King of Cups. It's like a King Triton sort of energy. And um, so we have the Ace of Coins. Sorry, I had to look at it again. Interesting, Ace of Coins. And then we have the Two of Coins. This is really interesting because normally with Two of Coins, um, you think of like partnerships, but this is a woman. There's someone else there though. I can sense there's um, another energy there clearly. Um, here we have the Three of Cups. I mean, three, excuse me, Three of Coins. This is clearly Three of Coins. I mean, this is like teamwork working together to like construct something create something the four of coins oh my gosh i love this card um i mean looking at it you can tell straight away um what um fairy tale this comes from obviously beautiful and we have the five of coins very um similar to the rws like this sort of snowing um sort of imagery in the background with um i don't know what era this is but it that looks very like england i think um i'm not even gonna try to date it because it's i am definitely that's not my strong suit but yeah um that reminds me of like 
I don't know. I'm going to just take a wild guess and say like um, 18th century, maybe like London or I have no idea, but that's, I don't know. That's what I'd like to imagine in my mind. <laughs> Six of coins. Yeah, meaning is definitely very, um, very expressive. Seven of coins. We have eight of coins. We have the nine of coins. We have the ten of coins. Oh, I love this ten of coins, you guys. Once again, I'm getting Arabian Nights energy with a little bit of something else. Like that sort of, um, yeah, like that sort of uh, golden era, you know, that type of energy here. And then here we have the page of coins. This is such a page. <laughs> it's cute. It reminds me of like puppy love. Knight of coins. And then we have the Queen of Coins, Marie Antoinette. Or, you know, one of those French courtesans um, back in that era, clearly. It's very, very cute. Very cute. I love it. And then we have the King of Coins. This is, yeah, once again, a little bit of that Arabian Nights, but more so something else. Um, like Hans Christian Andersen or like fairy tale vibe as well. I love the combination. It's just so darn cute and just whimsical. I love it. Okay, and then we have the Ace of Wands. We have the Two of Wands. We have the Three of Wands. Oh, I love that one, the Three of Wands. We have the Four of Wands. This is definitely unique. Because usually with the four of wands, you get the um, the wedding, I think it's like a wedding canopy or like a wedding, um, uh, yeah, like a canopy for a wedding, but this is, uh, or for union, but this is more like different kind of energy. I like it. It's so unique. Um, five of wands. So yeah, this is um, some conflict here. We have the Six of Wands, Victory. Ooh, I love this. I'm getting some like, um, almost like a theatrical version of Cleopatra or something like that, or like a Greek, uh, like a Greek queen or, s I don't know, it's, I like it. <laughs> and then here we have the Seven of Wands. So yeah, clearly this is, um, I mean, excuse me, the swords, wait, is this swords or wands? Hold on. I'm pretty sure it is wands, but let me double check. Skip ahead to see if there's, no, 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 yeah, it's wands. I just had to look at the other, um, to make sure because this, to me, I could even see this as seven of swords because it looks like thieves, but maybe this is a different meaning. But then the shading, I don't know why, kind of reminds me of something else as well. And here we have Eight of Wands. Yep. Uh, you could just look at it and pretty much sort of intuit that meaning. Here we have Nine of Wands, almost there. We have the Ten of Wands, very traditional, very traditional, no guessing there. And then we have the Page of Wands. We have the Knight of Wands. Ooh, I like this. I think the Knight is a woman. Wow. Okay, and then we have the Queen of Wands. I like how she uh, is musical. And then here we have... Sorry, I had to stretch my hand really quick. I'm holding the camera. And then we have the King of Wands. Interesting. I'm getting like alchemist. That's different. I love it. We have the Ace of Swords. <laughs> I don't know why this puts a smile on my face. And then we have the Two of Swords. Oh, sorry. This was the Ace of Swords. Did I say that? Yeah, this is the Ace of Swords. This is the Two of Swords. Dark, Darker once again. But definitely... Um, Getting this meaning of, 
Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to obviously mean like not being able to make a decision or, you know, not being able to see something that's being hidden. Um, three of Swords, this is very expressive because honestly, to me, the Three of Swords is the, um, to me, it's like the heaviest card and this clearly represents that meaning so very very expressive there we have the four of swords Ooh, it gets darker with the swords doesn't it because swords is usually always a little bit heavier and then here we have the five of swords interesting i ha i definitely have to look through this again and study this because this is fascinating six of swords we have the seven of swords okay so this is the thief okay or that cyclops oh okay sorry i'm getting excited noticing like different kinds of folklore and mythology and things like that eight of swords interesting nine of swords That's expressive, very expressive. Ten of swords. Ooh, look at the oh my gosh. Swords don't play, you guys. Swords do not play. And then here we have the page of swords. This kind of reminds me of um you know that saying, the pen is mightier than the sword? In this case, the page of swords, um, it's like he's a writer. So I kind of got the pun if there was a pun <laughs> and this is why I love this deck you know it's just it's funny you know it's... okay and then here we have the knight of swords wow this kind of reminds me of the death card I'm getting a lot of Scorpio energy from this knight of swords immediately but at the same time um, definitely has a different meaning it's more so um like a meaning of like a vibe of moving forward instead of transition or pushing through you know um despite any odds like that kind of energy okay and then we have the queen of swords Ooh. and then finally we have the king of swords so that wraps up this uh, review slash flip through. It was really more of a review. Um, so yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share if this resonated with you. Um, and I just wanted to um, remind you guys that I have an Etsy page where you can get personal email readings from me if you want. Um, and the link to that Etsy page is in the description box below. Um,